Well, good evening, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the uh, European markets for end of days trading, the 22nd December 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, in terms of uh, market numbers, let's just uh, do the summation for you again. We certainly seem to have a uh, a positive close in the FTSE uh, going into the close. Now the Asian markets overnight were more or less mixed. The Nikkei down, <coughs> Shanghai flat, but the Hang Seng certainly down 0.8%. Uh, and uh, the US markets have uh, certainly have eluded the uh, key 20,000 uh, handle on the on the Dow. In terms of uh, European markets, the FTSE finishing up stellar, led by oil and uh, a weaker sterling. The German DAX certainly finishing weaker. The French CAC flat. FTSE MIB under pressure due to uh, the banks again, uh, Spanish and Italian banks now, uh, okay, and a potential bailout of one of the banks, state bailout certainly isn't good news. You've got the IBEX certainly down as well, obviously Spanish banks concerned and the uh, the stock 600 certainly under pressure as well. Now, <coughs> in terms of fundamentals, certainly has been um, interesting today, okay, in terms of uh, weakness. Now, we had the consumer confidence number out from the UK, slightly better than expected overnight, GFK. Uh, import prices, uh, inflation data for, for Germany, slightly coming in on the stronger side, okay, certainly coming in, uh, same type of theme, okay. Uh, Italian industrial data certainly coming in uh, mixed again. Um, overall, net-net positive, although the year-on-year -year number was certainly uh, questionable. Uh, in terms of retail sales, Italy certainly coming in stronger, trade balance slightly better as well. And then we had the barrage of US data. Now, initial jobless claims actually came in higher than expected, so certainly negative. The uh, GDP data on the Q3 level certainly came in at 1.4. Our annualized level came in slightly better. Personal or consum uh, consumption expenditure came in stronger. Core personal consumption came in in line. Durable goods data certainly came in stronger as well. So certainly coming in, certainly a mixed set of data overall. The overall GDP data was stronger, but the uh, jobless claims certainly rising as well. Canadian retail sales coming in stronger as well. CPI inflation data coming in slightly weaker. US housing data mixed again. Personal consumption um, on a potential month on month basis coming in flat, slightly weaker. Okay, so personal spending coming in weaker as well. Hence the reason why US markets certainly moved lower, which again was was a surprise given the light volume constant flow higher. Okay, now the other news that I think is more important in terms of the uh, the actual market was the, the rally in oil uh, triggered by Saudi's view that um, uh, 2017 would be more stellar for growth. Okay, and obviously the pact that they have in terms of oil. Especially given the fact that we had news with regards to Libyan production increasing and uh, uh, on excess supply from Libya, and then obviously we had the uh, the actual increase in supply in the inventories over the, the night before, and that certainly reversed that right, reversed that, and certainly markets started to rally in the back of stronger GDP data as well. Now, from my perspective, the the, the bearish news or the biggest bearish news for the for the day today was ECB to buy as few bonds as possible below deposit rate from January. So from January onwards, certainly looking. Um, not as rosy for the uh, QE machine. ECB aims to wait until after Germany's September election before next policy move. So the, the bullish news has certainly has been factored in in terms of QE uh, being prolonged but reduced, okay? And now we're basically uh, at odds because we have the French election, we have Germany election. Obviously, we've got uh, geopolitical risk via Russia and Turkey, and then we have a situation in Berlin. So, and again, you have China as well with regards to this potential hawk that's been nominated by Mr. Trump. And it'll be interesting to see him in Beijing warms and trade after Trump picks China hawk. So again, it's going to be interesting how all this fundamental news is actually factored and baked into the market given the fact that we're in the light volume environment and the market is constantly floating higher regardless of the economic data. So it's manipulated to a large extent, okay? So let's look at the actual technical picture now, given the fact that we are aware of this potential manipulation. Let's see exactly what this market is doing. Now, the German DAX certainly seems to have put in a potential double top at 11.475, 11.480, .4 and that's what we're working off now. So given the fact that we've had this uh, hawkish rhetoric from the ECB, okay, certainly has hurt the German DAX. You can see it's falling down almost 50 points from the pivot high. Certainly remains weak. Now, we put in a lower low. That's the important thing, folks. We put in a lower low, 
at uh, 11 for 30 so now we're looking for a lower high so the concept of higher highs and higher lows are finished and now we're in a bear trend where lower lows and lower highs are the uh, the actual theme so bear that in mind in the 10 minute chart 60 minutes again we've certainly failed to move higher okay certainly remain vulnerable now to a potential break lower okay daily chart of the german dax again we put in a doji okay and the weekly chart certainly does indicate resistance in this region now even with light volume etc we're still failing to move higher past this key resistance so okay and that certainly isn't a good sign so bear that in mind okay so the mdax 50 now this is an important indices now you can still clearly see in the daily chart we've certainly pushed higher on the mdax 50 but we're still at that uh, double top resistance so we haven't breaking that convincingly especially given the fact that it's the last day tomorrow so it'll be interesting to see how the market unfolds especially given the fact that the nasdaq certainly is weaker overnight okay especially with regards to the uh, european indices and the uh, us uh, i'll certainly give you an insight into uh, the actual uh, uh, stance on the nasdaq as well now the french cac at the moment uh, again if i go from the large time frame first again you're languishing here okay so doji candle just trading sideways 60 minute chart has already put in a potential hns formation so again we're looking for a potential flush here now on the french cac looking to potentially close the gap gap below so double top is in hns formation is active 10 minute chart at the moment on the um, the actual uh, cac at present you have uh, support and resistance here in this region okay so let's just watch this and observe this okay so from my perspective you're certainly looking at resistance in this zone here okay so again looking for resistance here french cac from my perspective again you have this mini hns formation as well okay looking for a flush lower especially given the fact that the euro usd has risen to 1.04 it's actually higher than 1.04 it risen it rose to 1.0440 at one time today so again looking for weakness there okay folks bear that in mind so looking for weakness uh, in the french cac led by a potential resurgence or a rally in the euro and you have this hns formation that's certainly proving them okay FTSE 100 certainly finished that double top towards the end the daily chart at the moment is into that key resistance at 7060 so watch out for 7060 again the the rally in the uh, the FTSE rally was all to do with uh, dvp weakness first of all until obviously we had this rally in oil as well so As you can see here, symmetrical wedge for sterling certainly has broken the downside and you're seeing weakness here, helping the FTSE 100 to a large extent. Now the four hour chart on sterling certainly does have support in this region. So again, we'll certainly observe if that support were to go, then you are looking at potential support further down, support down at the 1.21 level. Okay, in terms of sterling, certainly didn't push higher to 1.27 and has been uh, certainly has rejected that ever since. So be interesting to see how sterling reacts now we do have the us dollar index into resistance after today's potential um, economic data now we can certainly see in a daily chart we're languishing here four hour chart we're trading sideways we've already put a double top in on the four hour chart and the 60 minute chart at the moment looking for a lower high in the dollar so looking for a lower high in the dollar certainly looking for a potential move lower okay especially after double top will certainly indicate weakness or should should, should should indicate strength for sterling okay should indicate strength for sterling now we did have a potential um, uh, comment on uh, the actual eu ruling uh, in terms of uh, the 48 member nations all agreeing to a post brexit deal okay so again you're looking for risk off uh, certainly is bearish if the EU, uk is going to delay its potential negotiations and it's going to take longer than expected and that certainly is hurting sterling today even though we have talked about potential higher inflation going forward although weaker growth uh, and it'll be interesting to see how sterling reacts again it's a wild card and it's subject to news flow and also the dollar as well dollar index as you know stronger gdp date today does certainly affirm that but weakless weaker jobless claims as well so bear that in mind okay and we also had personal consumption lower as well okay so keep an eye on the dollar index so keep an eye on the uh, sterling sterling certainly coming into potential support okay FTSE 100 let's go back to the FTSE again FTSE helped by a stronger oil price oil price at the moment currently trading at around the 52 dollar level so certainly helped by the oil price as well you are now coming into resistance on the FTSE here 
at 7067 so again looking for resistance on the FTSE 10 minute chart the FTSE at the moment you currently have double top so working off double top resistance for now and certainly has held thus far in terms of the euro stocks let's bring up the euro stocks as well whilst we're here uh, euro stocks on the daily chart currently uh, putting in a doji good sidebar consolidation though so bear that in mind okay 60 minute chart the euro stocks again you've held that uh, potential resistance at 3270 3276 you do have an unfilled gap above though at 3280 so bear that in mind but we haven't we failed to certainly close that so again certainly is a very sign and for now it's a, it's a series of lower lows and lower highs that's all i can see at the moment so any pop certainly uh, an opportunity to short from my perspective certainly is um, uh, from my understanding is certainly bearish okay right i think that's a good summation of european indices then uh, keep an eye on the euro too folks i think that's quite important in terms of its rally although it certainly seems to be um, so it certainly seems to be fizzling out at the moment but given the fact that we've had higher inflation number and higher inflation readings and also economic data certainly seems to be getting stronger especially from italy today and also the ecb sounding hawkish as well there certainly is a strong possibility of this hns formation playing out so left shoulder here you got the head okay just basically creating this right shoulder then looking to rip higher so again be cognizant of that okay and if the, the euro certainly moves higher and the dollar certainly tops out then you certainly have a potential top in European equities to a large extent. Okay. On that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye.